everyone, and welcome to the pre-show of the second Premier Series Finals. My name is Ken Casillas. You might have heard me on commentary for the teen, amateur, and elite divisions throughout this entire season, and we are coming at you from Life Force. Uh, I've got two amazing co-hosts with me today. Boys, who are you, and uh, why are you here? Hello, everyone. I suppose I'll go first. My name is Billy Dixon. I've been commentating a bunch of the youth divisions throughout the second Premier Series, and I am absolutely loving it. It's been really, really cool to see so many great athletes from across the world do their best on these Premier Series courses. I could not have asked for anything better. I'm happy to be here. Billy, you're being humble here. Billy got third at True Function in the amateur division as well, so shout out him. And then, of course, we got one more host who is no slouch at Ninja himself. What's up, Ninja fans? My name is Jack the Animal Tudrin. I'm from a small town in Western Massachusetts, and I've been in the Ninja world for eight fantastic years. I've been commentating with the World Ninja League for the past two, and I have never had more fun than getting to work with this amazing WNL team to bring you the latest and greatest Ninja action. This was my first time covering the Premier Series, and I've had an absolute blast getting to watch these phenomenal athletes take on some wild courses. And at this point in the season, I can tell you one thing. This upcoming finals competition is going to be one of the greatest in WNL history. Dude. Beautifully said, Jack. It's going to be such a great weekend. 200, over 200 athletes, all ready to battle it out on some of the craziest, most creative courses set up by Jaden Welch and Becca Margulies. The team over at Life Force absolutely cooks every time they host a competition. And I was saying this before when they hosted a qualifier earlier. If that's what their qualifier looks like, the finals are going to be some of the best moments in Ninja history. I'm so, I'm so, words cannot describe how excited I am. I don't know if the course is going to be like hard or speedy or just very, very technical or just a merge of all of it. But I don't think... It's going to disappoint us at all. Jaden and Becca do an incredible job with everything they do. There is a reason that they won the Best Course Designers Award at the World Championships a couple of months ago. Not only that, yeah, but that was their second title. Second title exactly. in a row where they got Best Course Design. So that's just, that just goes to show how consistent they are. So it's safe to say we can expect some amazing stuff from them. Yeah, I remember getting to see the, the course walkthrough for their challenge course this season. I was blown away by what I saw. I was like, there's no way that they can make this course any better. But as they went from obstacle to obstacle, my mind was just further blown at the amazing design of all these courses. The space of it is incredible as well. Because, because the venue is just massive, they can, they, can, they can include everything they want to. They have so much space to just play around and be free with what the, what the obstacles can be and how they're managed and what the spaces are and the order of them. It's just so great. I can't get any more excited about this. It's incredible. Oh, I definitely can because not only is Jaden and Becca really good at, at taking familiar ideas and dialing them up to an 11 out of 10, but they're amazing at creating completely new concepts as well. And I think we're going to see a big mix of that. We're going to have the placement course. It's going to be a lot quicker. You're going to see some unorthodox spins on some rather traditional techniques, which I think is going to make for some really exciting runs. And then, of course, the challenge course is going to be super technical. I think that's their bread and butter. They absolutely specialize in making unique technical obstacles and really making it a grind through the course. The further in you get, the harder it gets. So I'm excited to see who's going to rise to the occasion and take home the win. Sure, they really had some great obstacles this season. I remember that one obstacle, double vision. That was probably my favorite, perhaps the entire competition, where the athletes were sliding down the track, had to take the rings and bring that behind them on the track. I, I can't describe it any, any better. You just have to see it. It was unlike anything I had ever seen. It was so good, man. That entire course was just breathtaking to watch every single run. Some unorthodox moves, as, as I said earlier. It's super, super exciting to see if any more unorthodox moves can be implemented into the Premier Series Finals Challenge course. It's going to be a very, very fun time to see what the course is. The, the second we get it like fully unveiled, whether it be to us in like a private video or a walkthrough, or like on stream, when it's going through it in the little walkthrough, it's going to be mind-blowing to see what the configuration is. 
So that life force qualifier was fantastic, but there were also so many amazing competitions that we had this season. I will have to say my personal favorite was the one that kicked it all off, the Stanford Ninja Academy qualifier. I'm from the area, so I did know a lot of the competitors who took on the course, as well as the course designer, Will Schlegeter. Will has put together some difficult courses in the past, that's for sure, but this one was one for the Ninja history books. This course, in my opinion, had the perfect combination of grip, technique, and endurance. With only four ninjas moving on from each division, this course did a great job of testing every skill that ninjas have to train for. And that up for snags obstacle at the end, loved it. Yeah, man, up for snags is by far one of my favorite obstacles that we've seen in the Premier Series. It was such a great way to end. And to see just Jackson Erdos, the reigning world champ, be the only one to beat that in the Elite Division, that was something insane. That was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Not only that, but the elite ver the, the elite version was obviously really, really nice with the cane as well, but the youth version where you had the two rings to swing and then going sideways, I liked seeing the progression throughout the divisions, you know, seeing a bit more of a technique, trying to get a bit more height and ready, getting ready to drop on impact with those rings. Very, very exciting and nice progression. Yes, Stanford was my personal favorite as well. <laughs> Something also worth noting about specifically up for snags is will moving it around the course you know for pretty much every division before elite it was in the middle of the course but for the elites it was the last obstacle because he is able to realize when an obstacle is harder than it should be based around the place on the course i thought that was a really really smart decision by will to make sure that people could still go further in the course still be challenged in the meantime, and then up for snags was properly placed. I just, so shout out to Will for just doing a great job with what he does. Crimpy William, as they call him, he did a great job out there. But I do want to talk about our next qualifier we had after that. We moved to New York for the next qualifier in Ferox, the home of last year's Premier Series Finals. So this course was designed by Zach Eichenstein, one of the elites who will be competing at Life Force this weekend. And Zach sure knew how to challenge the athletes. He created a grip gauntlet, of course, and by obstacle five, you could see the fatigue that the athletes were experiencing, but they kept pushing through, which was awesome. And I am so glad they did because Zach also included a very high tech flying bar obstacle that actually dropped my jaw when I watched the elites take it off. Dude, that flying bar, as it got harder and harder to twist around, that was absolutely insane. One of my... Favorite moments from that competition has to be when Noah Munier was running the challenge course. He got to that obstacle and then proceeded to link it, which I did not think was actually possible. Uh, we had only seen, I believe, Jackson Erdos get to that point at the time. And so I wasn't too sure, you know, how, how his approach was going to be. Jackson took a backswing, maybe two, and made sure that he was really set. Noah just went. And that's, that's confidence right there. And I, I really, really enjoyed watching that. The Ferox course was absolutely incredible. Knowing that from last year's Premier Series finals, they had to make a course as challenging as that was incredible. And seeing so many different athletes throughout all of the divisions just progress and progress throughout both the placement and challenge course was incredible. Along with the elite division, we had so many massive names there as well. We had Jackson and Noah, as we said earlier, but we also have big names such as Kevin Rodriguez, Connor Galvin, Joe Capo, Ace and Pritchard and a lot more across all of the divisions, and it was so good. Yeah, You're forgetting some of the females there. You know, we had Addie yes. Herman. Yeah. Addie crushed it. Corinne Capriotti was there. It was amazing. Yeah, Addie had a really good run there. I remember that one. That was fun. Yeah, Ferox, definitely one of the, the highlights of this season. But after that, we had another phenomenal competition, the Austin Ninja Qualifier. And that one, I remember as one of the courses, or qualifiers actually, that was just geared towards speed. Certainly on the placement course, but also on the challenge course. I felt that out of all the qualifiers this season, that one really turned out to be more of a speed course. And not to mention some of those amazing obstacles out there, such as the Mega Charizard balance tank obstacle, and then that's, those spinning handlebars on the last obstacle was wild. That obstacle, unsurprisingly, but also surprisingly went unbeaten. I felt more and more confident as we saw some athletes get to that point 
specifically Flip Rodriguez. We saw him it progress to those spinning handles. And for a very, very good minute, I was like, oh, he's got this. It was a bit shocking, but it was one of those where the more people I saw fall, the more I was like, oh, man, we're going to go buzzerless on the challenge course there. But still an amazing course. Like you said, very speedy. I love courses that prioritize efficiency um, just because that is the type of mindset you need to have coming into finals. You know, you have to be able to perform well on every obstacle, but you also have to be able to do it in the least amount of moves possible so that way you can get higher up on the leaderboard. So I do think Austin Ninjas did a really good job at prepping their athletes for the finals. Absolutely. But the first day of that weekend was absolute chaos throughout the youth divisions. It was so crazy. Seeing the course unveiled to seeing that final obstacle was absolutely incredible, especially in the pre-team male division, which we will get onto very, very shortly, I'm sure. Our fourth qualifier of the Premier Series was our first overseas qualifier over at the Compound in Australia. They've hosted many championships for the Ninja Challenge League, which is the WNL's Australian partners. And the course designer, Clem Vertigan, made one of the most unique courses I think we've seen in a long, long time. Australia has a long history of primarily doing endurance courses. And ever since they started competing on a global level, speed has been factored more and more into it. So now we're seeing a lot of strength-based obstacles on some speedier courses. The time limits are being cut down significantly. And a lot of those athletes are now learning how to go through these courses very efficiently. The first couple of obstacles were very weight-based. We saw learn to turn where our athletes would pivot on a balance beam. And then it led into a very large TikTok as the second obstacle. And so it really required throwing around a lot of force. And then as it got further into the course, you know, now Clem's made the athletes tired. There's more cliffhangers. There's bigger laches. Specifically, there's one uh, called lache up, over, and around, where our athletes would do a table flip move and then do a lache out to a bar and then grab a third bar that would pivot. And that was really, really techy and would take a lot of hang time in order to actually progress through it. By the time we got to the final obstacles, these athletes were grinding out on cliffhangers, precise flying bar moves, and you could tell that they were exhausted, but they were unwilling to give up, and it made for some really good action as the weekend progressed. Absolutely. It was super, super happy. We were really, really happy to see a lot of the progression throughout the divisions, of course, especially on that first obstacle in the challenge course, the learn to turn. Seeing the first, the first couple of people skip the actual process of turning it, that is an immense time save. So a lot of strategy must have been played in. And I like the fact that along with the endurance stuff that Australia has recently been doing with these courses, the strategy within it is also really important to take note of to coming into these finals. Yeah, definitely. And Kane, I don't think you could have put it any better. I think Clem Vertigan's uh, vision for that course was to tire the athletes out in those first two, three obstacles so that when they got towards the end, they really had to fight, give it everything they had left. And that was where we found out who would be making the finals and who would not be. It really proved proven who our champions were. Couldn't agree more, Jack. There's some really, really strong athletes coming from Australia to the finals. Super excited. You're going to want to watch out for the father-daughter duo of Darren and Millie Baker. Both uh, performed very well. Darren won at the compound in the amateur division. And Millie took second in the elite female division, and she was our reigning teen female Premier Series champion. So we'll see if she can get a new title in a new division. But coming after Australia was a qualifier back stateside in Colorado at Arc Ninja with courses designed by Nate Hansen and Austin Gray. This was our first venture into this corner of the country in quite a bit, honestly. And it's super exciting to see how much talent there is there. Nate and Austin made a great placement course, very speedy, required fluid movements. You know, you couldn't really stop moving once you started. If you hesitated a little bit, you would kind of end up in no man's land and it would definitely take away some seconds. They did a great job at balancing their time limits with the obstacles. We saw Kane hopping on the uh, flying bar cradles it ended with this massive bogey line and you only had about 30 seconds to get through it and you had to imagine the athletes would be tired after that it was super fun to watch 
required so much force and grip, but also a lot of speed in the early half that really made sure that the most well-rounded athletes would be the ones at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah, the roster for this competition was out of this world, especially throughout all of it, really. Within the kids' division, you had people like Cyrus said coming back into a Premier Series competition for about the upteenth time and finishing the course. And I think it was in our mature kids' division where we started to see a bunch of beta breaks within the later half of the challenge course, where on the part you would take a little hold and lock it into a bear trap, they just grabbed a pipe and skipped about a minute of dead hanging. And it was really, really nice to see. And of course, our elite male and female divisions was absolutely stacked with incredible talent from all the way across that corner of America with people like Annabella Heinrichs, Katie Bone, and of course, the power duo of Max Feinberg and Caden Lebsack, with so many others like David Tomasoni, and of course, our UK representative, Hollis Lansford. Yeah, there's definitely some... ARC was such a great, great competition. It was so much fun to be a part of that, small part of it even. And yes, those beta breaks that we saw in the youth divisions, I definitely want to talk about those later, because those I thought were very exciting. But yeah, there were some great obstacles. I mean, the course designers, Austin Gray, Nate Hansen, come on now, that's got to be amazing right there. And there were so many great obstacles throughout the course, like Angry Birds, they had some unique twists on that obstacle. And then there was that Mustache Madness obstacle as well, which in the Elite Division, the athletes had to lache to an upside-down wingnut, unlike anything I had ever seen before. And then, of course, they had to transfer their way around as well. So it was quite the fun course that those guys put together. Oh, yeah. And I love what you guys are saying about beta breaks because creativity when you're tackling a course is so important, especially when you get to a high level of competition like the Premier Series. And they're definitely going to need it for Life Force's finals because we saw that in our sixth qualifier, which was at Life Force. And they absolutely delivered some insane, insane obstacles. I love Jaden and Becca's style of course design. You saw it primarily on their challenge course. They started off with some speedy obstacles, moves that our athletes were very capable of doing, but still required a little bit of power. And the further they got in the course, the more technical it got. It wasn't a bunch of grippy cliffhangers, vertical limits, things like that. The stuff that you feel like you would see later on the course. No, these were, uh, these were ring tech, bar tech, cane tech insane moves and and you have to think tech is so much harder when you're tired when your arms are pumped and the adrenaline is starting to go away and you have about a minute left to make something happen you know that's when you really really have to shift gears dig deep and we saw that big time we also saw a lot of families come out to compete some from the united states some from our friends in canada uh mainly qualifying uh, through the Canadian Ninja League or through great performances at Worlds. Some family duos you're going to want to watch out for are Spencer and Cody O'Brien, the father-son duo who took the top two in the elite male division, that qualifier. And then also on the female side, you've got Nora and Lily Brown John, Nora competing in the elite female division, Lily competing in the teen female division. We've seen a lot of big things from those two, Nora most notably being our reigning world champion from season nine. So we'll see if she can add premier series champion to that growing list of championships she's been obtaining. I'm very, very excited to see that duo. And another family member that is going to be of the Brown John side is Sharon Brown John, who I believe is their mother, if I'm not mistaken. She also competed throughout the life force qualifier unfortunately didn't qualify but i'm sure she's going to be there in spirit supporting the daughters it's gonna be very very fun to see but yeah the course on life force was absolutely incredible seeing endurance and endurance tech as well just seeing it all done so professionally when an athlete is very very tired is something that we don't really see too much in a lot of courses and we love the fact that life force delivers it in such a way that makes us so entertained and hungry for more, which is what we're going to get very, very shortly within the next week. Yeah, and Becca and Jaden, as those course designers, they are going to keep all these athletes on their toes. We saw just in the qualifier the amount, immense level of skills that the ninjas needed to have in their ninja toolbox in order to take on the course. Like there was a jumping spider, there was all sorts of ring tech and bar tech. I believe there was even an underbar in the youth divisions, all sorts of great 
obstacles and movements that they put in there. And I expect to see nothing less in the finals. Absolutely. Absolutely love a bunch of the life force uh, characteristics that are always on show. And the next week after that, we took a trip over to the UK for my uh, home country gym, which was True Function Ninja Training Ground. That was another incredible qualifier. A lot of Europeans united within that. We saw a bunch of French domination within all of the divisions that had the French athletes and all of the big names from the UK were here. We had Jack Andrews, uh, not Hollis Lansford. We had Harrison Daly as well, completing that trio of experienced ninjas throughout the Premier Series, along with like people like Tommy Matthews and Victor Mikhailov. And of course, people like Vincent Maurice and Julian Silarakis. And I am very happy to have obtained third place in that competition in the amateur division. It was a very, very fun day, that was. Billy was so excited about Hollis Lansford that he started mentioning him even when he wasn't competing. But <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, True Function is great because they are a very old school gym in the sense that Dion Trigg is such a traditionalist. He's an OG of Ninja. He's been around for decades and he's been to so many different countries to compete. So he's taken each style that he's ex experienced around the world and put them all into one gym. You saw that reflect on the courses. We saw some fundamental moves and then we saw it slowly evolve into more complex, weird type of, uh, of skill sets that we saw in the back half of the challenge course. And I, uh, I really, really enjoyed seeing all of the Europeans push because it started off as such an endurance heavy culture when it came to ninjas. So many of the European ninjas started off as rock climbers and every course felt like a, a burnout, a stage three, an endurance course of sorts. And now we're starting to see more skill sets being incorporated and it's leading to a real, real evolution over there in Europe uh, of, in talent and in course design. Yeah, Kane, and funny as you mentioned that, because thinking back to what I saw in True Function, being an American who's watched a lot of American competitions, it looked like there was a lot of more like rock climbing type movements and a lot of grip and endurance movements. It looked more of a burnout course to me, and I think that they're still keeping true to where they came from out there. I loved it. It was such a fun course. All those obstacles out there, it looked like everyone was having an absolute blast. Lots of fun over there in True Function. Of course. And again, it congrats, was... Billy. Thank you guys Absolutely. very, very much. Super, super happy to have obtained such a title. A couple of weeks after that, we headed back over to the States into Florida for Softlow Ninja Academy's Premier Series qualifier. That course was absolutely, it was absolute madness throughout the entire thing. We saw a bit of the challenge course be morphed throughout the placement course as well, courtesy of Diego Dominguez and Vinny Castronova who we are going to see very, very shortly. The, the course throughout Softlow was very, very nice, seeing a lot of techie moves, especially on the back half of the challenge course. We saw a lot of tight moves. We saw an incorporated flip throughout one as well, a little board flip in some cases, followed by a reverse grab X hold, along with a bunch of weird diagonal laches ending with you doing essentially a backwards boot scoot underneath a little Halloween monster to hit a buzzer vertically. It was super fun to watch. Yeah, there was a lot going on in SoFlo. That was definitely our spookiest qualifier that we had. There was witches, pumpkins, and then scariest of all, guys, there was a lot of cliffhangers and vertical limits in there, too. And as, as a ninja, you know, that, that's definitely daunting when you got to see that, especially towards the end of a course after your arms and your hands are already tired. But I saw a lot of ninjas really push through there. It was great to see them fight through the end of that course. And there was a lot of new stuff out there, too, that I hadn't seen before, some new technical obstacles, and especially that, I guess that's another scary move, that one where you had to flip yourself over in order to swing over. That was pretty impressive. You know, I love that table flip, board flip move. It was created by Caleb Bergstrom, who runs the Jungle Gym also in Florida. So it's nice to see that obstacle kind of come full circle back to its uh, place of origin to an extent. Um, I, I really appreciate seeing those types of moves really break out into, um, into the other divisions outside of elites. This was also my, uh, my home region, and I was eligible to compete, but it was my anniversary that day. So uh, I was just cheering on all of my friends and everything, and it, it just looked like such a great time between the Halloween theming 
And the courses that very clearly had beta breaks, one of my teammates, Nathan Hone, in the uh, amateur division, ended up running up the warped wall without his hands because he could. And it was just things like that. It's the little things that really that really made me excited. Um, and we saw that throughout all divisions, you know, from Easton Flesher, East the Beast, in the kids division, all the way up to the elites where Jay Lachey Lewis absolutely destroyed those vertical limits you were talking about, Jack. It was a great time overall to see. The cast of that competition was absolutely incredible. A lot of famous names. And for our final qualifier that we're going to talk about today, Motus Ninjas, we had a couple of famous names as our course designers. The domain of both TJ Rehack and Donovan Matoya creating some absolutely incredible courses with a motorized final obstacle incorporated as well, which I believe might be a first for our premiere series, which was absolutely incredible to see. The roster was insane as well across all divisions. In elites, we had some surprising names as well. One of them was Jera Boyd. I didn't expect him to come out for premiere series, but it was definitely a pleasant surprise to see him with Hollis Lansford coming back and out one of our finalists from last year, which is Nam Fan. Yeah, I had a lot of fun watching Modus. I felt like that one, people were coming out there and they were having a good time. That was the sense that I got from Modus. Of course, Donovan Matoyer, wow, what a course he put together. Certainly challenging, but it also looked like fun. Out of all the Premier Series competitions, that was the one I think I wanted to try the most, just because there was so many different ways you could get through some of those obstacles. Really interesting to see what the athletes wanted to do. When they made up their campaigns. Yeah, and going back to the course designers, Donovan is such a longtime fan of Ninja. He's really perfected his craft over time, as has TJ. So to see their minds come together and almost see, you know, the natural evolutions of fan favorite obstacles on that course really, really was a great thing to see. I also want to spotlight uh, two siblings who ended up taking the win in both of their divisions. It's Jackson and Hannah Amaro, both teenagers, teen male, teen female. They're both competing tomorrow, or sorry, not tomorrow, in two days in the teen division for finals. So you're definitely going to want to see if they can pull off the double whammy again. It'll be a very, very exciting time for sure. That wraps up all of our qualifiers. All of them are going to come together throughout the course of this weekend. It's going to be super, super fun to see. Let's get on with it. Visions. Be sure to tune in tomorrow and Sunday, November 16th and 17th for the Premier Series Finals here at Life Force Ninja in Bellingham, Washington. Two courses, over 200 athletes, and so much adrenaline funneled into these amazing obstacles. You're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be a historic event. On behalf of Billy Dixon and Jack Tudrin, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Ken Casillas. We'll see you guys on the mic for the Premier Series Finals.